today we are going to study a new chapter before that let's answer this question do animals need rm and k2 why you can record your answers this has already been done in class but what's my intention um, doing this is we should realize that animals also have emotions and they need our care and while caring for them we are not actually caring for them we are caring for ourselves so say how is it possible ma'am i'll tell you our life completely is dependent on nature you are no right and who takes care of nature yes it's a cycle that animals are a very important part yes so when we take care of animals the entire nature is taken care of and we should always remember that like us they have family they have emotions they feel pain and they need our care Do you think you can keep unusual pets? Name one you want to have. And why are we talking about unusual pet? Because that's what our lesson is all about. The fairy with horns. It's about a little goat. This story is written by the skin bond. Who is an Indian author of British descent, and he lives with his adopted, fam adopted family in Bangalore, Mysore, and he has been awarded various awards, like for uh, the Indian Council for Child Education has recognized his role in the growth of children's literature in India. He was awarded the Sahitya Academy Award in 1992 for our trees still grow in Dehra. His novel in English. he was awarded the padma shri in 1999 and padma bhushan in 2014 so he is a very you know uh, recognized and very famous and especially a child book writer this is our title of the story a pair of thorns what an unusual title right now this story is just a memoir for the writer means he speaks about his own life as a kid so he tells uh, the starts the story uh, when he speaks about his grandfather and says that he had provided household with a large variety of pets as large as one could wish for as a kid but his own favorite was the little black goat who followed him home from the mustard field one day so uh, he says that that goat had followed him when he had visited the mustard fields one day so each year before the monsoon rain came the little uh, song river that was a narrow stream he says and um, he liked waddling across it and then wandering through the fields and tea gardens watching the men moving about uh, among the young yellow mustard and the women in the bright red sarees picking tea so he used to go and watch it hmm. before the monsoon rains came and the river little song river was by then just a narrow stream maybe he didn't go after that because the river would be very broad and it will be difficult to cross right so he used to go there and watch the yellow mustard fields where men were moving about and women in bright red sarees were picking tea so he had been sitting on the bank of a small irrigation canal you know what is an irrigation canal irrigation means you know um giving waters to the fields there is a system of irrigation canal through which water is provided to the fields gazing at a couple of herons fishing in muddy water herons are large water birds when he felt something bump 
his elbow. When he looked around, he found that there was a little goat and it was jet black in color and was very soft. He compares the softness of the goat with velvet and it had lovely gray eyes. What happened next? Let's find out. Now he says neither the owner nor the mother was around. He continued looking for it but didn't find them. So uh, the black goat, she continued to nudge him and then what he did, he looked in his pockets and found something uh, that was a ginger biscuit and then he fed it and the goat ate it with relish and then he, they both sat down as he was sitting, the goat sat down beside him and began nibbling at the grass. Sometime later, when he got up to leave, the goat rose too. And when he started walking back home, the goat followed him unsteadily, her thin legs taking her this way and that. The goat was so young that it was not even, you know, able to walk properly and was, you know, um, unsteady steps. With unsteady steps, he, she followed the boy, the writer. Now, the writer said, go home. But what she did, she danced around him and then followed him uh, to the riverbed. And the writer felt that with these trembling lips, legs, uh, it would not be able to cross because the current was there in water. He would have, uh, the goat would have been, you know, swept away by the current. Hmm? Then what did the writer do? He picked her up and then sat her down on the other side after crossing the stream. But still, it remained by his side and kept rubbing against his legs. Now, when he set for home at a brisk pace, means quick pace, feeling sure that uh, the little goat would not be because it was following him with as it was very young and it couldn't, you know, even walk with steady steps. So, he was sure that he'll be, she will be left behind. And he will reach home and the goat will not be able to follow him. But his assumption was wrong and her legs were stronger than he thought. And she came hopping along right up till the gate of our home. That's what the writer says. Now there was nothing he could do. So he carried her and presented it to grandfather. Not another pet, said grandmother. Now, grandfather was, you know, a person who, is, who was providing a variety of unusual pets. But grandmother, maybe she was fed up of it. And then we saw, when she saw the goat on the veranda, lapping a saucer of milk, she said, I have told you both again and again, I will not tolerate another animal in the house. Now, let's see what happens next. Okay, so it was grandfather who usually brought home various animals, the writer says. And then uh, had grandfather known that I too had started bringing home livestock, uh, grandmother known that the uh, writer too had started bringing up livestock, she might have considered sending me back to boarding school. That's what the writer says. So what did the grandfather do? Always he was an ally to the writer. So he pretended to have purchased the goat as an investment. He, you know, uh, said to the grandmother that goat's milk is very good for your rheumatism. Now, what is rheumatism? The, uh, a condition of aching joints. Now, the prospect of milk made grandmother more tolerant to the new pet. Even though she knew in some time the goat would, um, before the goat would be of any use. Means it will, it will give any milk, produce any milk because it was just a small, you know, baby. Then the goat the writer referred to as, refers to as my goat, was soon named Tinkerbell and the fairy in Peter Pan. After the fairy in the story of Peter Pan, there was something uh, of the fairy in Tinker. Now, uh, the writer says that he, in his mind, it, uh, there was some relation between the fairy in Tinker and the goat. Hmm. And uh, she skipped about very daintily and the feet seemed equipped with springs when she leaped around the lawn. So, uh, he named the goat Tinkerbell. And to make the name more fitting, he tied a little bell to her neck. And uh, uh, so that he will, whenever the tingling sound will come, he will know where she is. 
Now, uh, Tinkerbell loved an early morning walk and was in many ways a better companion than a dog. Why? Because dogs chase after squirrels and stray dogs. But only thing Tinkerbell chased uh, after was butterflies. She will tumble into ditches and slither down slopes in her eagerness to follow the butterflies. But grow goats, he says, grow fast and unlike Peter Pan, Tinkerbell and, and the fairies, our Tinker had to grow up. And to begin with, what she developed were a neat pair of horns. And what happened after that? Her appetite also began to increase and she loved leaves and flowers of the sweet pea and nasty. Nastertium and uh, their name, these were grandmother's favorite garden flowers. Now, grandmother was going to be pissed, angry. So, one morning, as they found out the sweet peas had been destroyed, hastily, grandfather and I uh, blamed the cow, the writer says. They both blamed the cow and said that uh, they, the, it must have gotten into the garden the night. Grandmother made no comment but gave a look that suggested she knew who the culprit was but she let it slide. But trouble, the writer says, was like unseasonal rain and it came when we were least, least expecting it. What happened? Actually, Tinker, having discovered the uses of her horns, began using them at almost every opportunity. The gardener, the postman, the fruit seller, all had complaints to make. They dared not turn their backs on dear little Tinker Ben because they, she used to butt them. And the climax came during the visit of one of my aunts. The writer says, and which aunt? Aunt Mabel. And she has a habit, she had a habit of bending over the flower pots, holding brief conversations with the flowers, and she used to say that it helped them grow faster. Now, once when she was bending over the pot, talking to the geranium, when Tinker suspecting that uh, writer's aunt was eating the leaves, decided to bud this intruder away out of her favorite snack. Now Aunt Mabel must not have taken it kindly and she was kicked off with the veranda and that was the end of Tinker's stay with us. The writer says, Grandmother immediately ordered the cook to take her straight to the bazaar and sell her at any price to the first customer who came along. Now the writer could not do anything. He just stood there sad and watched poor Tinker being laid away. She kept looking back, he says, and kept beating, probably wondering why the writer was not accompanying her on that particular walk. And uh, the writer says that I could only wave to her and hope her next owner would be kind. When the cook came back, he said Tinker had been sold. But later when the writer was alone in the kitchen with him, he said that he bought the goat himself. And then he, the writer could come and visit Tinker any time to the cook's home, which was behind the bazaar. And the writer says that he did visit Tinker sometimes and in due course found her with a little kid. Tinker had become a good provider of milk and the cook's family was very pleased with her. She was on good terms with everyone and only butted strangers who bought too low when giving the customary salam. Now this is a tradition. People, you know, bow down to give salam. Hmm. So, they were butted if they were a stranger. So, this is the story of Tinkerbell. So, choose the right options to complete these sentences. The right to walk to the place, hoping to leave the little goat behind. Grandmother said she would not tolerate another animal in the house. Tinker developed a neat pair of horns. And Mabel spoke to plants because she believed it helped the flowers. It helped them grow faster. Yes. Now, study well. And we will meet with our next video. Take care.